in today's episode. You are about to watch the very best out of 132 episodes and 66 million views in total. Me and the Weekly Dose editor selected our favorite clips from the very beginning of this series. This is also the beginning of the end of the Weekly Dose of Automotive Stuff series, at least on this channel. More info on that soon. So please, sit back, relax, get yourself your favorite drink and let's go on a nostalgia trip. By the way, the editor made sure to put in some little surprises too. One hour of automotive stuff, coming right up. You may know the company Bose as a company that makes speakers, but they also tried their hand on something completely different, a active suspension for cars. And when I say active, I really mean active. It was so powerful that it could make cars jump over obstacles. It was also extremely smooth on uneven surfaces and prevented body roll completely. While driving in this Lexus LS400, the passengers couldn't feel a single bump, except for the actual jump trick, of course. Unfortunately, this technology never went into mass production because of weight and cost problems. We were so close to jumping car meets. Have you heard of the truck? On the truck. 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 My god, it's a truck! Carrying a truck! Carrying a truck! Carrying a truck! This is what a nitrous perch looks like. Is it really needed? Yes, since it helps to clean the delivery lines of air and vapor, thus guaranteeing immediate power from the nitrous system. Plus, you can show dominance over your rival by sneezing on his car. Here is why installing a roll bar should be one of your priorities when you buy a older Miata. The perfect way to wake up, the sound of an engine blowing out, like the sound of an angel choir. Ever wondered what would happen if a PC gamer gets his hand on a car? A few episodes ago, you have seen the most badass burnout in this series. Now, get ready for the most painful one. Since 2017, the WRC rally no longer takes place in Poland. Why? Because of spectator safety concerns and the fact that during one rally stage a fire engine had to react to an emergency and went in the opposite direction of the stage. It is kind of a shame since the stages in Poland are one of the fastest on the entire calendar and you have jumps like these. In today's episode, a Lamborghini will be red, a Porsche will be red, and a Ford will be dead. Sometimes your car will pay you back for bad maintenance or abuse, just like here. Eat up, little guy. This is a cool way to show how fuel injectors work. That's the literal embodiment of the S officer, it's stock meme. You just cruise with your friend and suddenly an argument breaks out and he decides to do this. I hate when this happens. When I first watched this video, I didn't realize that those things were RC cars, but that's not the biggest surprise here. This Fiat S76 with a 28.4 liter engine doing a brutal startup. You know 
the videos of people going to top fuel drag races for the first time, well, here's my favorite one. Are these the ones where the planes come out? That's why I don't play Forza on keyboard. Spot, but also partners with the real world benefits. Oh no, and the start has not gone to plan. The Goodwood Festival of Speed is probably the best place to show off your new car or race car. The previous record on this hill climb track was set by a Formula 1 car from the 90s. It was standing for many years at 41.6 seconds, but due to safety reasons, newer Formula 1 cars are no longer allowed to do timed laps on this hill climb track. This, however, did not stop the McMurty electric fan car from smashing the record with a time of 39.08 seconds. This tiny electric monster sucked itself to the ground and literally sweeped the hill climb. <laughs> If you think about building a getaway car or ruining your car's engine, then all you need to do to get a massive smoke cloud behind your car is to fill the windshield washer reservoir with diesel. Then root the windshield washer nozzle into the engine intake and then every time you pull on the windshield washer button, you create a massive smoke screen. This guy installed a device on his Miata that allows him to control the pop-up headlights with his phone. This device can make the car wink in all sorts of ways. And it even has a sleepy eye function. Wink right. Check. Wink both together. Check. And probably the coolest feature, the sleepy eye. I'm sure here is really smart and has probably done more modifications like this. If you think your city is bad at panning roads, check this out. In Seattle, there is a highway exit that has an incredibly sharp turn right after a tunnel entrance. This catches out of speeding drivers by surprise, which leads to crash, after crash, after crash. The best conversations in life are those that you have with complete strangers at a gas station at 2 a.m. What's up, bro? Nice, how are you? Thank you, thank you. You know, uh, how much more can I got? You know what, let me show you. All right. So we got around 700 horses in here. What a beautiful engine. Want to go off-roading on big sand dunes? Do not forget to install a roll cage. Normal rotary cars have around two rotors per engine, but some people like to have more of them. This is the first ever six rotor engine built. With almost four liters of displacement, it can produce 1000 horsepower at a flywheel without any turbo or supercharger. Look, there comes a nice golf. Enters our bomber. <laughs> Getting squeezed by a semi truck is one of the scariest things that can happen on a highway. The 2011 Toyota Corolla Lighty scratched no dents runs perfectly fine. <laughs> this is the Opel Manta B. It did not have the best engines, nor performance, but the looks kind of make up for it. Do you think that Los Santos Customs is unrealistic because they can paint your car in one minute? Then check out what Kuba Przegoński, a Polish professional drifter, and his team pulled off when presenting his new drift car.
And no, there was no super white trailer that would fit two cars. What they did is basically a perfect cut between two separate takes. You can't have an engine warning light if you don't have an engine at all, Joseph Stalin. I am sure that you have seen those images of insects being preserved for millions of years. Well, someone at Mercedes had the brilliant idea to preserve an original G-Class from 1979 in a huge resin cube. The G-Class was placed in a huge form that was step by step filled up with resin. Then it got polished. It ended up weighing over 52 tons. I don't know about you, but to me the thought that this car could potentially outlive humanity is just fascinating. This is marketing done right. This is how the first generation Mazda Miata could have looked like. Portrait here is the V705 prototype. Here's a pro tip. If you are driving in a parking garage with blind corners, try to take them slowly. Also, you should know how to press a brake pedal. Here's a pro tip, do not store your Red Bull next to a road where all the drivers tend to drive by. And by driving by I mean flying by. Now, I am sorry because there's only this super low quality video of this happening, but it was too funny to not include. Everybody was okay by the way. Of course, uh, to the true performance of uh, these AMGs. This is the Cadillac Cyclone. It was a prototype that never made it into mass production. Next to the very weird looks, it had cool pop-up headlights. Did you know that the new Ferrari Pista is powered by two jet engines? If you play BMG, you may think that this is a rocket powered bus. But no, this is a natural gas powered bus. The hissing sound you can hear is the pressure relief valve releasing the compressed gas. Without it, there would be a big explosion. This happened back in April this year in Italy and nobody was hurt. This is the creation of Reftap Industries. Their main job is to end the overpopulation of Chevrolet Silverados. The coolest way they help this cause is by swapping a Dodge Demon engine into one of those trucks. For extra cooling, the radiator has been mounted carefully to not obstruct the driver's vision. And the turbo is mounted 10 feet above the ground to make sure it gets to breathe the best air possible. Not sure if this is car related, but it's insane footage. This is a train getting wrecked by a tornado back in 2008. Actually, it is car related, since the white tank you are about to see is carrying shock fluid. After the crash, the tank was leaking, but got quickly contained. Are you tired of getting tickets from speed cameras? Do you have the attention of a goldfish and always forget where your local speed camera stands? This guy found a solution. 
I can't believe I have to say this, but don't actually do that. In the end, it will be replaced and the taxpayer aka you will have to pay for it. Kids, how did you get to school today? Bus, car, walking. Scoot ski. Here you can see how classic headlight wipers worked on a Lada Niva. BMW E30. A Polski Fiat 125. And a Saab 90. Since normal donuts are not possible with front-wheel drive cars, this race car driver decided to celebrate by doing donuts in the reverse gear. This is a Orbis wheel, basically a electric hub motor that can be added to a front-wheel drive car and make it four-wheel drive. Not only that, the developers claim that it can transform any normal petrol car into an electric or hybrid one. If that doesn't scream cyberpunk to you, I don't know what will. Subaru owners are one big family, but there's always these two brothers that constantly play pranks on each other. <laughs> Did you know that in 2008 Land Rover built the first mobile bridge? Michelle Mouton is probably the most badass female rally driver. She won four rally stages and finished second just a few points behind Valtteri in the 1982 Drivers' Championship. And yes, that's her driving the legendary Audi A2 Quattro. <laughs> This news agency from Brazil thought that this video of the presidential limousine drifting in Forza Horizon is real. And they actually broadcasted this on TV. Para ser aprovado. Olha lá. Olha aí o carro presidencial de ataque num distúrbio. In the world of aviation, any landing that you can walk away from is considered a good landing. By that logic, the guy driving this Camaro should get a pilot's license right now. Imagine driving in the highway while a truck full of twerking sheeps pass by you. Even though the Devel 16 hypercar may be fiction, its engine is definitely not. 16 cylinders and a quad turbo setup result in 5000 horsepower. It uses 1 liter of fuel every 2 seconds. And if you are still not convinced that this engine is stronger than your poor fiction, take a look at the fan vent blades that almost get close to the amount of air the engine is consuming. Apparently, the only thing that can suck better is your mother. It doesn't take much to make a man happy. A custom built Mazda RX-7, for example, should be enough. Oh! Oh! I wasn't ready! I wasn't ready! Here is a couple of stadium trucks doing what stadium trucks do the best. Make sure to tighten your shoelaces on drag strips. I always knew that the typical rotary wrap reminded me of something. People say that Volvos are built like tanks. I kinda agree.
When building tunnels or other things that need to be excavated pretty deeply, in some situations it is more cost efficiently to lower trucks into the construction pit itself instead of building a system to transport the ground. A comment under this video stated the following. I would have shit myself twice, had 5 heart attacks and blacked out 3 times before I reached the bottom. This Miata spinning out during a race and still staying smooth. This is Wachen Michaelian. You may know him from building the spider car. The problem is that the spider car is escaped and is now living somewhere in the Russian forest. To fix this problem and kill the spider car, he built this Lada 1600 that is spitting 6 meter flames out of its headlights. During a launch with a rear-wheel drive car, you have to carefully feather the throttle to not lose control. With a front-wheel drive car, you can carelessly slam on the throttle. My guy went so fast he broke reality. This poor thing was once a Vespa. Welcome to Cyberpunk 2021. Oricari was a company from Italy that made custom parts for cars. One of those parts was this super cool front grille for the Volkswagen Golf. I heard a lot of aggressive rotary engines at idle, but this one beats them all. This guy has accidentally knocked his classic Chevy Nova in the neutral and it rolled away. Luckily, the only damage caused was the bent door and quarter panel. Have you ever wondered whether a thin fence made out of some wires would stop a stadium truck from flying into the crowd? Yeah, me neither. Dear Americans, is it true that just riding your lawnmower across the neighborhood will get you this much action? This is probably one of the hottest cars out there. Meet the Saunaudi. No, it's not an Audi from Saudi Arabia. It's from Estonia. This group of friends built a sauna inside of an Audi 100 that was used for funeral services. And the best part is, it's drivable. The only thing keeping this from being street legal is the lack of seat belts and the seats themselves. <laughs> Rally crashes are often scary, especially if you end upside down in a lake with extremely dirty water. Back when I was younger and I was still playing with hot wheels, I would never think that they could pull off some nice tandem drift. Remember this video, in case you ever wonder why Lamborghini built a SUV. Imagine being at a red light and a banana car peels up on you. Something here is not alright. Can you spot it? For over 20 years, the land speed record is still held by the Trust SSC. 
To this day, it is the only land vehicle to break the sound barrier after reaching 1,228 km or 763 miles per hour. Powered by two Rolls-Royce Spy 205 turbofan engines, it weighs over 10 tons fully fueled up. And another fun fact, this record was set exactly one day and half a century later after the first ever man broke the sound barrier. It was Chuck Yeager in his Bell X1 experimental rocket plane. Also, this is how Honda Civic drivers feel after putting a Monster Energy sticker on their car. I'll trade up as fast. 30, Hello everyone, this is your mid video, those of vans and minivans. What would you pick? A LS swapped Toyota minivan? Or a tuned Honda Odyssey? This 1985 GMC rally van has been built to look like it's driving upside down. Also, the wheels on top are spinning while driving. Vans are boring, but they have a lot of space. And you can fill that space with a gas turbine helicopter engine. Would you ever think that this van could sound better than most sports cars out there? This is the Renault Espace with a 3.5 V6 engine. This is the Porsche B32. While it is obviously a rebadged Volkswagen bus, it features a rear-mounted 3.2-liter engine, which pumps out 230 brake horsepower. Custom parts for the suspension and brakes were also installed by Porsche, which allows this car to reach 130 miles per hour without falling apart. That was the last van and minivan clip for today, I think. I can't be mistaken, this video is an hour long. Imagine being fueled up on pure adrenaline and racing for positions. Then you need to pit for new tires. You drive into the pit lane and Juan Pablo Montoya is blocking the pit entry because he stalled his engine. What do you do? <laughs> Do you want a free slat? Just flip your car on the roof and go on a ride. While I feel bad for my Miata when I get a tiny scratch on it, there are people out there that do stuff like this to their cars. The Toyota Cressida had a function where it not only shows your initials on your birthday, but it also plays a little birthday song. This is not a Tic Tac with wheels. This is a Tic Tac with wheels and a hidden steering wheel. Meet the Honda Motor Combo, arguably the cutest scooter ever built. It was built to fit inside the Honda City. Actually, the baggage compartment of the Honda City was designed to make the Motor Combo fit. The handlebars, seat and foot bags fold into the body, which makes this the smallest scooter ever built by Honda. This is Jake Burton, and this is his truck, nicknamed the Wild Child. While around 3 years ago he set a record for the longest mega truck jump, where he flew around 175 feet or 53 meters.
Around two weeks ago, he decided to step it up by quite a lot. He jumped almost 300 feet and over 90 meters, setting up a new world record for mega trucks. <laughs> What surprised me the most is that only the front right wheel just fell off. Other than that, the truck was mostly fine. The driver was okay by the way. Oh, and yeah, for legal reasons, don't try this at home. Your spine won't like this. This is in my opinion one of the coolest Miatas on YouTube. A 2004 second generation Mazda Speed Edition that burned down in a garage fire. However, the owner decided to resurrect it as a drift car. Now that's a badass design. <laughs> police car that the hood respects. You have learned about the First and Second World War, but did you hear about the Burnout War? It was a war between Australia and Saudi Arabia. In 2013, during an event in Australia, 69 cars managed to do a burnout for 30 seconds at the same time. A few years later, during an event in Saudi Arabia, the number of cars doing a burnout at the same time went to 119, which meant Saudi Arabia took the crown. However, two years later, the Australians struck back with 126 cars. This record will never be beaten again, at least officially, because the Guinness World Record Organization will not acknowledge any other attempts due to emission and environmental impact problems. Even the best traction control system cannot beat the laws of physics. Hydroplaning, where your car basically floats on water, is the best example. Here is a Porsche GT3 spinning out while not even going full throttle on a racetrack. The driver even predicted it. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to go full speed here. I'm gonna lift it right now. In the drive, you get up to like 140. There you go. BMW E36s are getting rare, so it's important to preserve them and try to save as many of them as possible. Long live illegal street drifts and sky-high insurance costs. <laughs> Somewhere in Northern Europe, this Miata was doing highway poles. It was slicing through the air at incredibly high velocity when this happened. If you upgrade your car's power, you will quickly notice that some parts may not be made for this much power. Whether it's a clutch, transmission, differential or the roof simply flying off. What I personally didn't know is the fact that BMW was producing V12 engines until last year. Here is a luxurious BMW 763 Li making a very luxurious sound, comparable to a Lambo. Limousines may seem to be useless in almost every way, but at least they can still do donuts. Here is something super cool, coming from a car manufacturer that I did not expect to do something like this. A few weeks ago, Fiat decided to launch a campaign where they decided to never again build a car in the color of grey. That's not even a joke by the way. Even though grey is the best selling color, they decided to ditch it and only offer colorful cars from now on. Hats off, I love this decision. Also, the video you see right now of the Fiat CEO getting submerged in a giant bucket of paint is actually real. Oh, those Italians. Ah, il grigio. Il colore preferito di tutti noi costruttori di auto. Grigio. Tedesco, giapponese, francese. Vende bene, vende sempre. Il mondo non ha bisogno di un'altra macchina grigia. Cambiamo le regole. Da oggi, niente più Fiat grigio.
I don't even want to know what would happen if a bird would get inside of this thing. It's pretty common to see a car swap with the Toyota Supra's famous 2JZ engine, but what about a OM606 diesel swap Supra? <laughs> No, this is not a video game, this is real life. A RFI Honda NSX carving roads around Suzuka. I think the Miyatsu is flirting. Nobody. My dad went playing music in the car with speakers. The Indian Border Security Force, also called BSF, has a neat little trick for the Maruti Gypsy, which is a off-road car based on the Suzuki SJ Samurai. In case there's an obstacle that cannot be crossed by the car, the crew just simply jumps out, disassembles the doors, engine and frame. They carry all the parts across the obstacle and assemble it again. All of this in under 2 minutes. I am not sure if this tactic is actually used in operations, since the car looks pretty unstable to drive, but maybe someone in the comments can give us an answer. Finally, there's a racing series where your mother could absolutely dominate. Doing autocross or rallycross, there are two ways to go around a cone. It's either going left or right. Well, that is not true. You can also just jump above it. Mom gives me the shopping cart. Me five minutes later. Another video, another Lexus V8. This time it is the LC500 with its 5 liter V8. There's also a hybrid version of this car, but come on, who would like to miss out on this sound? This is one of the videos that shows perfectly that no matter how powerful your car is, you will not get close to someone that knows and actually uses the limits of his car. Here are two Toyota AE86s being chased by a Honda S2000. It may have twice the power, but you can still see how hard it is to keep up. This is the Chaparral 2J. It not only has a weird name, but just looks weird, has a big rear end, and is good at sucking. Just like your mom, it uses two fans from a tank engine to suck itself into the ground, thus being able to take corners much quicker. This Mitsubishi Evo 9 is so loud, it's reporting itself to the police. <laughs> E63, off-road capable vehicle no one takes off-road. The one guy who takes it off-road. This is one of the last things you want to hear while off-roading in your Jeep. Oh, everyone in the drive shaft. Drive shaft? Yeah. Volkswagens are not only reliable, but also easy to fix.
Volkswagen. Das Auto. Here is a classic from the Polish Internet. One of my viewers had the cool opportunity to record the fastest jet-powered semi-truck. It is powered by a Pratt & Whitney jet engine from a T2 Buckeye jet trainer. Apparently, it managed to reach 376 miles per hour in a world record run. One of my viewers recorded this race car catching on fire on the Paul Ricard racetrack in France. Luckily, the driver made it out of the car without any injuries. Whoa. Here is Ryan Newman saving his car from the wall during a qualifying session. This is how the average pickup truck looks after tuning it in GTA Online. The Alfa Romeo FNM trucks had a very interesting transmission system. Unfortunately, I did not find any information on how this transmission works. So maybe someone who watches this video can explain it in the comments. That would be greatly appreciated. Meet Dylan. Other than building Miata boats, Miata monster trucks, making Miatas do skateboard tricks and generally just being a red guy, he solved the issue of Miatas being barely noticeable in traffic, where big SUVs and trucks dominate nowadays. So, he took some lamps usually used for your mama's car, which is a cruise ship, and put them on a Miata. To make it look more realistic, he even crafted the housing out of painted cardboard. And of course, they actually work. By the way, Dylan is giving away this very first generation Miata, so go to his criminally underrated channel and check out all the crazy videos he did so far. Also, by entering the giveaway, you support more of his crazy ideas for the future. Hit it! Wow! <laughs> they work so good! Here's a view from the driver's seat, you can still see the road, kinda. During the 2022 F1 race in the US, Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll, which in this year are in the same team, had a scary collision, where Alonso's car was almost thrown into the air. Nobody was injured, thanks to modern F1 safety standards. However, it's just scary to think what would happen if Alonso's car actually took off, just like Mark Webber did over 10 years ago. Eight hundred fifty horsepower seems like a lot until you put it next to ten thousand horsepower. That's precisely what Snap-on Tools organized: a drag race between a eight hundred fifty horsepower trophy truck and a nitrous funny car. You cannot really measure the exact power of it, but it should have around ten thousand horsepower. I'm waiting for the first Miata owner to swap its engine with that thing. This is what my friend and fellow YouTuber Muye would call a brain car. Basically, a car stripped of everything that is not need to drive. Dawaj, palto. Ale to idzie, kurde. <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> when you think of two-step, the next thing you expect is a Miata. Here's a couple of tiny BMW Isettas racing against each other. This is probably the world's cutest race. This is how you leave the highway in a Volvo. On the first glance, the Seekong Speedway looks like a normal racetrack that usually hosts NASCAR and other road car races. But there's a cool fact. This racetrack has once been flooded with water to host a boat race. If you plan on starting a drift career, get a car with pop-up headlights for extra smoothness. This is the Ford Sierra Cosworth. It is basically the normal Ford Sierra, built to compete in the Group A racing category. The stock Cosworth engine had around 220 horsepower, but this guy cranked it up to 470 horsepower. You don't even have to be a mechanic to know the struggle of losing the 10mm socket. This guy, however, found a solution. Down, so I guess I need to say don't try this at home, but at the very middle of my tower is an emergency 10mm all the way up there. So as you can see, I've left a 10mm up here for a very long time. The duct tape is falling, but hey, it hasn't fallen off yet. So at some point, if I ever lose 10mm, I have an emergency one all the way up here. If you think of a scrapyard, you probably don't realize it is not as straightforward like putting a car into a giant crusher and calling it a day. Before it gets completely scrapped, all fluids such as motor oil need to be drained, tires removed and then the car is left for a few days or weeks for people to find replacement parts. Only after this process the car is further being processed, crushed and later the metal gets recycled. The Miata may be a fun car, but if you are obsessed with your own well-being, it is not for you. For a long time, Breaking the one-minute barrier on the Ashley Forest Rally Sprint was something that only the best drivers and cars could achieve. The first car to actually break the one-minute barrier was a all-wheel drive Mazda RX-7, driven by Rod Millen. Look on the way up and just how beautifully this car is balanced. It's almost an engine. And it just does everything beautifully. So that one-minute barrier, and he thinks it is within his grasp. As the track has dried out a little, the car is performing beautifully. Have a look as he comes down to the line. Are we going to make history in Ashley Forest? We have 59.90. Rodney Millen has broken that psychological barrier on this hill. The one-minute barrier. And he's happy too. This Danish Army Leopard 2A7 showing off his mobility. To look a tiny bit better, the Peugeot 403 has hidden its fuel cap underneath the left rear taillight. Visible, está muy bien disimulada debajo del ojo de gato del farol trasero izquierdo. Si lo analizamos de perfil, people from the Netherlands have an interesting taste in truck horns. This pilot was watching last week's Formula One race from above. Here is a flock of Honda S2000s leaving a car meet.
This is the Megola. It is the result of crazy German engineering. The most notable design feature is the 5-cylinder rotary engine mounted inside the front wheel. Also, since there was no need for a clutch and transmission, the power has been applied directly to the wheel and the low center of gravity helped this thing to have excellent handling. A few weeks ago, there was heavy rain in Belgium and the famous spa Francorchamps racetrack got flooded. This is a super rare Ferrari 365 GTP Daytona shooting brake. Basically, it's a Ferrari wagon. A few months ago I showed you this monstrosity built by a guy in Russia, but there is a new kid on the block, which is even lower. This is the creation of Carmageddon, a YouTube channel from Italy run by three friends. They got an old Fiat Panda from the scrapyard, cut off as much as possible but left just enough space for one person to drive this thing. Then they built a custom chassis with, I assume, a 50cc moped engine. Also, since the windows are no longer functional, they are using a GoPro mounted to the roof to, you know, see. I highly suggest you watch the full video, it's just so unreal to watch this thing driving, almost like a glitch in a video game. Spot the car challenge. All keyless entry cars are not really keyless. You know what is keyless? This system developed for the Polones. Basically, the left plug activates the ignition system, the right plug activates the accessories like lights, and the clip activates the ignition itself. God bless Polish engineering. This is by far the worst sounding motorized vehicle that has ever existed. <laughs> You will never experience the thrill and adrenaline that classic Le Mans drivers had to go through in the 1980s. Or will you? Because you see, every two years there is a Le Mans classic race. What you are watching right now in the background is the Porsche 935 fighting through the field. The cars you see give you that weird feeling of nostalgia. Honestly, I would love to be just at the track and watch those things fly by. Coincidentally, there is a Le Mans classic race this year, in less than a month at that. I'm pretty sure that you know what the most common V8 engine, the LS, sounds like. But if you listen to this, would you believe me that this is an LS engine? Because you see, this Camaro has been swapped with a 6 liter LS, but instead of having two headers with 4 pipes each, which connect together with an Y pipe, the owner of this car decided to do things differently. Basically, he fabricated one big header which connects all 8 pipes together into one. While yes, it is a pain to manufacture, the flow of the exhaust is supposedly better. But who are we kidding? This is mainly done for the insane sound it produces. It sounds like a combination of a V8 and a V10 engine. Here are two more examples of this approach. A 8 to 1 Ford Mustang from 1965. And a beautiful BMW E30 swapped with an LS. Of course with an 8 to 1 header. Fun fact, some bikes can rev so high it is hard to fit all of the numbers on the rev counter. Take this Suzuki GSX-R as an example, where Suzuki decided to simply start the rev counter at 3000 RPMs. Actually there may be another reason for this, so please enlighten me in the comments.
the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Except when we are talking about a bunch of Finnish friends building a track monster. This Audi R8, or whatever is left of it, has a twin turbo setup that gets the car to over 1500 horsepower. It has insane aero parts and much more. Last year, while attempting to break the track record of the Porsche Rangi in Estonia, the differential failed. However, this year they got a new overall track record, which ended up being quicker than a Formula Renault 2.0 car. <laughs> I couldn't find the original source, but it was just too funny to not include. A C6 Corvette, not even dropping a gear, but still disappearing. With a trailer. You know, diesel trucks may not be the cleanest in terms of emissions, but this one is doing pretty clean stuff. The Chevrolet Chevelle had a feature called cowl induction, or whatever it's pronounced. Essentially, this is a flap that opens up when the driver applies the throttle. At higher speeds, it helps to suck in more air from the high pressure area right in front of the windshield. And at slower speeds, it helps to remove warm air from the engine. Also, for no reason at all, I looked up whether someone did some sort of active hood vents on a Miata. And yes, it exists. Pretty cool. This is a 1979 Ford Bronco with a big block engine, insane wheels and suspension that allow it to not only go to the local grocery store but also the wheelies. Also, the way it behaves reminds me of radio controlled monster trucks. During a mud drag racing competition, one of the competitors' car in the supercharged category flipped in quite a spectacular way. The driver was fine, by the way. Brandon Miller without the wheelie bar. Watch this. This is the swim car. A electric powered mixture of a dune buggy, go kart, moon buggy, and a tiny bit of a mountain goat. With a range of 100 kilometers or 60 miles, this creation can go pretty much anywhere. This 12,000 euro monster makes it also possible for people that are bound to a wheelchair to go anywhere they want. With 120 kilograms or 250 pounds, it is even lighter than your You've made it to the end, so I want to thank you by giving you some inside info. This series is moving to another channel that I am planning to launch in January. The current channel will instead focus on real life content and BMG videos. But yeah, once again, thank you and I'll see you soon. That doesn't make sense.